It is now time for the Robertsonian Sports Report with Chris Styles on 97.1 FM, 1340 AM, WAGR in Lumberton, covering sports for Robertson County. Now here's your host, Chris Styles. And welcome to the Rob Sonning Sports Report here uh, as we uh, look at local sports in Robinson County on WAGR. I'm your host, Chris Stiles, sports editor at the Robinsonian. And um, just looking back over last week's uh, high school football games locally uh, as well as UNCP. And a little later on in the show, we will look at uh, this coming week's high school football games uh, and UNCP as well. So um, jumping right in here, uh, St. Paul's. Earned a 35-6 to win over Fairmont last week in what was kind of the headliner game here locally. It was an in-county matchup. And the defense won this game for St. Paul's. It was kind of one of those defensive slugfest type of games, despite the fact they scored 35 points. Uh, they didn't score for about 23 and a half minutes to start the game. Neither side did. So um, St. Paul's scored two touchdowns just before halftime, uh, both resulting from interceptions. Uh, Jamarcus Smith returned one to about the 20 or so. Uh, a few plays later, they punched it in. And then um, Jaden Barnhill uh, intercepted a pass on the last play of the half and ran it back. So it was 13 to nothing at halftime. St. Paul's controlled the game a little bit more offensively in the second half. Touchdown runs for Joshua McBride and Quintel McNeil. And then Chris Bryant also had a pick six uh, for for, uh, for um, St. Paul's. rather. Uh, Chris Bryant, by the way, um, as a side note, uh, selected last week to the East-West All-Star game, which we played in – December in Greensboro. Um, he's the second uh, player on the Bulldogs to earn a uh, big postseason bowl game invite uh, as Jamarcus Smith will play in the Shrine Bowl of the Carolinas, which is actually one day before the East-West game. The Shrine Bowl is in Spartanburg in December. So, um, you know, great honor for both of them. And, and you can read more about that for Chris uh, at robinsonian.com. Um, Fairmont did score a touchdown on a uh, Gabriel Washington pass to Tyreek Thompson. Uh, in I think it was early in the fourth quarter of this game, uh, but as I mentioned, St. Paul's is pretty well in control for the second half. Uh, St. Paul's is at West Bladen this week. Fairmont is at Red Springs, and we'll talk about those games a little later on in the show. Grace Creek beat Lumberton 49 to 34. Um, the score uh, is what it is, but for Lumberton, it was um, a step forward really uh, to be in the game with a decent Grace Creek team. Um, Lumberton's offense found something it had been missing. They'd scored 58 points total before Friday and scored 34 uh, up in Hope Mills on Friday night. Uh, two rushing touchdowns for Jacoby Pevia, three passing touchdowns for Trayvon Moore to Reggie Bush to Michael Pitts and to Isaiah Gomez. Um, and the offensive stars for Lumberton are healthy now. That made a big difference in this game. Uh, they, of course, as we've talked about just about every week, have had a lot of injury issues, a lot of attrition. But getting some guys back now, uh, for the stretch run. Um, so it's the 19th straight loss for the Lumberton program, but kind of a light at the end of the tunnel now, a little bit more so than maybe there was even just a couple of weeks ago um, for the Pirates. Uh, they host Douglas Bird this week. And once again, we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the show. Here on the Robinsonian Sports Report on WAGR, I'm your host, Chris Stiles, sports editor at the Robinsonian, going over last week's football results. Southview beat Pernell Sweat 27-7. to Um this was 21 to nothing at halftime. Southview pretty uh, controlled the game pretty well in this one. Raymond Cummings did score a 17-yard touchdown run for Pernell Sweat. Coach Josh Deese made the point after the game his team is still playing hard, still playing somewhat well. Uh, it's just been against tough competition the last three weeks um, as they are 4-3 uh, and three now after starting 4-0 uh, and, oh and have a three-game losing streak. And it doesn't get any easier for the Rams. They host 71st this week, uh, the conference leaders in the United Eight. And we'll talk about that one as well later on in the show. Clinton beat Red Springs 56-15. to This was a Clinton domination, just as we've seen uh, against just about anyone else uh, all year. Kudos, though, to Red Springs for playing uh, hard through the fourth quarter. Their two touchdowns came late in this game. Uh, T.J. Ellerby caught one from Scotty Locklear. And Jaquelsa Mack ran for a touchdown. Um, Red Springs uh, has started conference play with the last two champions of the Southeastern Conference, uh, Clinton, and the week before they were at St. Paul's. Uh, now after a couple of road games, they'll return home for the final three games of the season. Um, of course, there's a preview of that on robinsonian.com 
and uh, we'll talk about that momentarily. Frostburg State beat UNCP 31-21. to This was up in Maryland uh, at Frostburg State's campus. The Braves kind of hung in there, but uh, just couldn't quite get over the hump on the road against a tough opponent. Uh, this is a Frostburg State team that's right there in the Mountain East Conference race. Uh, it was really the first, quote-unquote, tough day for Colin Johnson since he became the starting quarterback a few weeks ago. Um, but he'll be looking to bounce back this week. Um, through for, I think it was 125. I don't have it written down here, but I think that's what it was. Um, and um, had several, uh, quite a few incompletions, but... Um, Nonetheless, Sincere Baines had a good game rushing for UNCP. This is somebody Mark Hall said a couple of games ago. Uh, he really expects to become a star uh, in this conference um, for the Braves. Um, the former Jack Britt standout UNCP host Fairmont State on Saturday. And you can read, uh, as I say often, this just scratches the surface. You can read about all this at Robinsonian.com and in the print edition of the Robinsonian. Um, not just recaps from last week, but previews of the games coming up. Uh, which we're going to do here in a little bit. But coming up next, we've got Public Schools of Robson County AD Glenn Patterson Sr. joining us over the phone after the break. You're listening to the Robsonian Sports Report on WAGR. Back on the Robinsonian Sports Report here on WAGR. I'm your host, Chris Stiles, and we're joined over the phone by Glenn Patterson Sr. He's the athletic director for public schools of Robinson County. How's it going, Coach? Hey, pretty good, pretty good. Yep. And um, you've been on the job now about uh, eight months or so, so um, what are kind of some reflections over that period um, as you kind of have adjusted and and, um, gotten settled into the role a little bit? Well, uh, uh uh-huh. It's a different, you know, it's a different role. Uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, came on in February and um, worked on the Jerome, or Jerome Hunt, which was the outgoing uh, athletic uh, district athletic director. Um, so the, I, I, I'm really enjoying it. You know, sports is my passion. And so um, to, to be able to leave uh, one school and be able to, these 17 schools, uh, uh, it's a blessing. Uh, it's a blessing to, to see the talents throughout the county at the high school level as well as the uh, the middle school level. So I'm enjoying it. And it's just like any other job, you know. Uh, you know, you have a, a busy days and you have some, some light days. You have some good days and some bad days. But all in all, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And just completed the Robson Cup, the county soccer tournament here uh, two weekends ago. Um, so, what was that experience like running that event uh, for the first time? Um, it was it was a good experience. Um, you know, um, as a basketball coach, I really uh, hardly ever got a chance to sit and watch soccer. But um, coming into this role and, and and being able to see that level of of, of competition. You know, I, I saw uh, bits and pieces of it last year, uh, but, uh, man, it was a great tournament, uh, a great competition. Uh, you know, uh, both games uh, on uh, the championship and consolation, they were both uh, great games. Uh, I think Red Springs and uh, uh, Red Springs and Pernell went into uh, overtime, mm-hmm. and uh, that was a great game. And then uh, the, also Lumberton and uh, – and St. Paul's, the championship game, was a great game. Ended in a 3-2 win uh, for Lumberton. Um, so uh, it's, 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 it's great, man. Again, as I said, in this role, you get to see uh, all the talent in, in, in Robinson County, and, uh, you know, and, I, and I'm really enjoying it. Yep, and you've now run uh, a Robinson County Slugfest back in the spring, Robinson Cup, uh, the girls back in the spring, and the boys here this fall. Um, but probably the most visible role is – uh, at least to the public, is um, your role running the Robson County Shootout as PSRC AD. That's coming up here uh, shortly in a couple of months. So, um, And this is obviously a vent, an event you are no stranger to, having uh, coached in it for many, many years. Um, so how much are you looking forward to uh, that challenge and, and that experience? Uh, well, I'm looking forward to it. We're in the early stages of planning. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, um, 
we're we're trying to get the venues and uh I'm I'm still in need of one team uh for the boys on the boys side so uh if anyone listening uh hmm. uh have someone that's that's interested in in uh participating in the Robinson County shootout uh those dates are uh December the 20th through the 23rd um and I'm thinking you know this year we're trying to uh see if we can host the semis and the uh finals at on the campus of UNC Pembroke uh, again, we're in the early stages of planning, so uh, that's that's my vision. Uh, I would like to get these kids uh, more playing time on a college court. Uh, so, um, you know, we're looking forward to it. Um, you know, I'm excited. Um, I'm also looking for sponsors. So, um, you know, be on the lookout if, if, if anybody wants to become a sponsor of the Robinson County Shootout. Please uh, contact me. I can be contacted at the Central Office, Public Schools of Robinson County, um, Central Office. Uh, just give me a call and if you're interested in uh, supporting this event. Uh, but as, as always, uh, Chris, you know, that's, a, that's, that's an exciting uh, event for, for all, not only me, but for all those in, in Robinson County. Uh, you know, we're out for Christmas, kids are home for college. Um, you know, the kids get excited, especially those former players, girls and guys that, that play. They look forward to coming back from college and, 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 uh, and watching some great competition. Uh, so we, we're looking forward to that. We, uh, this year we have Dylan uh, boys and girls uh, as a part of, of course, the, the five Robinson County schools. Right. But then we have Dylan uh, High School that's going to join us this year, uh, Whiteville High School, that will be a part of it. And we have Lakeview girls that will be joining us. So we we, we still in hunt of a, a boys team. So if, if anyone could help me with that, you know, I'd be greatly appreciated. Yep. And um, if if you are able to have uh, the semifinals as well at UNCP, in addition to the finals, which have, have traditionally been there, Kind of would be a throwback. Uh, in the old days, the whole tournament was there, so um, yeah. that would be kind of a neat um, throwback if that's able to happen. Um, something we talked about earlier this week: uh, the legislative takeover of the NCHSA that um, was in a bill that passed the General Assembly. Governor Cooper um, has let the bill uh, sit on his desk and become law without his signature. Um, it, it appeared that uh, the votes were there to override a veto, so had he vetoed it. So um, he, he just let it sit and become law that way. But um, what, in your position, uh, leading athletics in Robs County, um, what is your kind of position on that um, effort uh, by the state legislature? Well, it's going to be uh, an, uh, interesting moving forward in the future. Um, now, of course, we've been governed by the North Carolina High School Athletic Association for many, many, many years. And, uh, you know, as a coach, um, I didn't always agree, but, you know, they were right. And so uh, they they had rules set in place, uh, you know, to govern all sports in, in North Carolina. So it's going to be interesting uh, moving forward to see how the legislators, uh, you know, uh, attack that um i i don't know if they're going to if the north carolina high school athletic association is going to continue to be the governing body over the sports in north carolina uh or not so um you know it's interesting to see uh what's going to happen but i I just hope that they put something in place uh rules in place that would uh, you know eliminate a lot of the things that i'm seeing happening uh, here, as, as you know, uh, Chris, over the last couple of weeks, uh, we've had a lot of uh, fights that took place at, at uh, games, football games. And, you know, in the past, I've been around 30 years, and in the past, the North Carolina High School Athletic Association assessed penalties for those uh, actions and in uh, and, and, and the form of a fine. And so that has, has went away. And, uh, and I think that has in, encouraged – uh, or, you know, these guys are the, the, the punishment for them, the consequence for them is not stiff enough because in the past, uh, football, you had to sit out two games if you got ejected. 
but now I think across the, the board is one game suspension for uh, 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 ejection. So I just don't think that penalty is stiff enough uh, for our uh, athletes. Um, so we need to put something in place that's going to uh, make them think about uh, fighting or, you know, think about the consequences that they're going to face if they decide to, to engage in a, a, a confrontation. Yeah, a lot of unknowns, uh, as you said, in, in regards to that. Here on the Robsonian Sports Report on WAGR, I'm your host, Chris Stiles, sports editor at the Robsonian. We're talking with Glenn Patterson Sr. He's the athletic director for public schools of Robson County. And um, one of the things you ever see is middle school sports here in the county. Um, obviously, a lot of that was already in place, but um, there's been some additional growth, uh, even in your short, your short, short time in the role. Um, so tell us about that. Uh, yes, uh, this year we um, we 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 added track for middle school. So uh, that's been in, in conversation over the last few years. And uh, on, on Jerome's way out, you know, we discussed that and um, you know the implementation of it. And so I moved forward with it. Um, and uh, it's, it's been a, a great experience for for kids, you know. And that's what we are here for is to give kids opportunities. You know, everybody's not a great volleyball uh, player or, or a great football player or whatever, but we want to give kids more opportunities to participate, to be involved in, in, in sports activities. And and by adding track this year, um, you know, I've heard a lot of great uh, feedback from, from uh, parents as well as coaches uh, talking about their kids excited about, you know, running track, uh, you know, they, some of them got cut from the volleyball team. And so they, they decided to run track and uh, they are really enjoying it. So, you know, that's what we are about here is to make sure that our, our kids in, in Robinson County have every opportunity to participate in, in sporting events. So, uh, you know, we're excited and uh, looking forward, moving forward. We're looking forward to uh, expand. And uh, this year we decided to just do the track events, uh, you know, this year. So, you know, next year um, we're looking into expanding uh, maybe into some field events. But uh, all in all, the kids have really, really enjoyed uh, participating. And if you don't have anything to do, uh, 17th of uh of this month, we'll be uh, running. That's the final track uh, meet. We'll be running at Fairmont High School as well as uh, St. Paul's High School. So, uh, you know, if anybody want to come out and, and, and enjoy some track, please come on out and, and uh, to Fairmont High School or St. Paul's High School. Those tr- uh, that's the 17th of October, and those events starts at four o'clock. And uh, in your previous role as athletic director at Red Springs High School, um, you were a big part of the uh, new athletic complex um, that's been constructed there and continues to be constructed there. Uh, the baseball and softball fields were played on this past spring. The football field uh, still under construction. Um, and now you're um, still involved, obviously, with that in your current role. So um, what's kind of an update with that and, and where that stands as far as the football stadium construction? Well, um at this time, we are we we're, we're you know we're trying to work towards uh, getting some some things ironed out at the track. Um, you know, we of course we we have a track there, but uh, we we're trying to get some stuff ironed out on the track. Uh, some of the ins and outs that uh, we got to get take place before we move forward on on uh, thinking about a football field. So that's, you know, we have different phases. We're on the track phase right now. Um, so, you know, football, I think, was phase three. So, uh, you know, we're still on phase two, trying to get the completion of phase two at this point in time. But a beautiful complex. I mean, uh, a long time coming. Uh, I was a um, product of West Range City Schools, and we had to play at Tom Cope uh, Park. And um, becoming an athletic director there, well, a coach there, and then an athletic director there, and having to hop from Chavis Park to Tom Coke Park, girls softball playing at Chavis Park, while the boys 
baseball playing over at uh, at Tom Cope. And as you know, Chris, that was the on opposite ends of the mm-hmm. of the town. So, uh, you know, it's truly a blessing for Red Springs High School as well as Red Springs community to have such a beautiful complex there and, 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 and make it so convenient for parents to have, you know, kids that's playing softball as well as baseball. They can they're right there on the same premises so they can, you know, they can watch both games and don't have to travel from one end of the town to the next to try to, you know, lead a baseball going to softball, vice versa, softball to baseball. So, uh, you know, people in the town is excited. Uh, we're looking forward to, to moving on and, and having the football field there as well as the track to make that complex complete. And you were the uh, head basketball coach as well at Red Springs for 25 years. So um, how do you reflect back on that, um, I mean, a large chunk of your life that was spent in that role as well? Um, You know, basketball was was my passion. And, uh, you know, to come back home and be able to coach at your your, your, uh, alma mater, so it, 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 it was a blessing. Not too many people can say, you know, that they had a chance to go back to their homeschool and coach but to, to be able to serve there and in, in that capacity uh, for 25 years man it was a blessing um enjoyed it um uh, you know loved the the the, uh, the 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 kids and you know just built a lot of relationships um you know i became a father to a lot of kids there um uh, that that still to this day come by and see me when they come in town. Uh, they will not leave Red Springs without stopping by the house to check on me. So, you know, that was that's what was rewarding to me, is to build those relationships with those young young men and those young women and also to, uh, to just watch them grow from adolescence to adulthood and, and, and see where they're at now as adults and, and having kids and and even some of them kids calling me uh, granddaddy. So, you know, that that, that was truly a blessing uh, and, and is a blessing. Uh, you know, uh, it's just I've enjoyed that time there. And, uh, and you know, I miss it. But, you know, I had to move on. And, and, and now instead of just having to a small window, now I have a, a larger window that, you know, I can build relationships with kids throughout the county, throughout Robinson County, and, and not just the Red Springs community. So uh, I'm enjoying it again. I, I, on, in my short stint, I have really sit and enjoyed games throughout the county. When you're at Red Springs, you, you see Red Springs athletics, and you don't get to see too many of the other sports in the county unless you're playing against that team. But uh, it's a different role and, 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 and a different view. And, mm-hmm. uh, and and I'm really enjoying it, really enjoying it. I'm just truly blessed to have this opportunity to, you know, serve in this capacity. Yeah. And I had Kenny Simmons on last week and asked him this question. Um, what or how much has high school athletics changed in the three decades or so that you've been in it? Wow. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's, it's changed quite a bit. Um uh, you know, and I had this conversation just yesterday with a gentleman uh, uh, as we watched the tennis match over at, at UNCP. And, uh, you know, uh, that, that my biggest part is the attitudes of the athletes. Uh, uh, from when I came in to uh, versus now, um, you know, I, 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 come in, I came in in the early 90s and um, I had kids that, that had to drive they might they might not have have had as much talent as the kids today because of course kids have so many other resources that they can tap into now to enhance their 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 talent uh that they didn't have back when i first came into the uh the system but um the attitude is, is is one i mean back then kids gave their all they they were gym rats they, you know, you open the gym. If you didn't open the gym, they were calling you. Hey, coach, can we get in the gym? Can we get in the gym? You know, and and over my last few years as as coach, I saw that change. Um, you know, you it was like I had to call them to get them in the gym. Uh, and I always told the kids, you know, you're only as good as the time that you put in 
to to your craft. Uh, and you know, I, I'm a firm believer. Um, you know, you plant the seed. You know, you water the seed, and, and you watch the growth. And that's what was going on in the past. Uh, I think the athletes of the day, uh, you know, feel entitled. Um, uh, a lot of them with the AAU going on, which we didn't have that going on back in the early stages. We did, but a lot of our kids was not, um, you know, they didn't have the opportunity to play uh, the AAU. But I think with the AAU uh, put in place, a lot that has changed a lot of kids' mindset. They go out and they compete and they get, uh, you know, coaches uh, looking at them, interested in them, and, and they just feel like they don't have to uh, play as hard or, or, or do the things that the high school coach need them to do to continue to get better. Uh, so, you know, I think that's one of the biggest things uh, that, you know, is, is that I've seen the change over the period of time from when I started to, to present day. Coach Glenn Patterson, thanks for joining us here on the Rob Sunny Sports Report. Hey, thank you. And we'll be right back here on WAGR. Back on the Rob Sunny Sports Report here on WAGR. And as we do in the last segment each week, looking at this coming week's high school football uh, and UNCP as well here locally. So jumping right in, Fairmont is at Red Springs uh, this week. It's the fourth in-county game of the season for both teams who are going to complete the cycle of playing each of the other four uh, the, out of the five high schools. Of course, they can't play themselves, so um, playing the other four. But Fairmont's uh, coming in with a six-game losing streak after last week losing to St. Paul's at home. Uh, Red Springs has lost its first two conference games after winning the two before that. Uh, an interesting a streak for Red Springs. They've lost 12 straight conference games dating back to the uh, COVID season in the spring of 21. Um, and, or excuse me, 12 straight home games. Um, and a it's their homecoming game this week, but um, as I wrote in the Robsonian, it is a true homecoming in the sense they've played four straight road games uh, over the last five weeks, had their buy in there as well. Um, and so... Um, literally coming back home uh, to finish out the season with three straight home games, uh, kind of an odd schedule, but um, that's um, the hand they've been dealt, and, and they're going to have um, Fairmont this week to start that stretch off. Fairmont coach Jeremy Carthen is also a Red Springs alumnus and is the uncle of Red Springs wide receiver T.J. Ellerby, so uh, a neat family connection there as well. Potential for a low-scoring game here. Both teams have kind of shown that capability at times uh, to um, – hold the opposition uh, in in kind of a low-scoring setting like that. Um, Red Springs' run game should be key with Jakelson, Matt, Curtis Wilson. Uh, Fairmont's playmaking ability in space uh, with it, with Gabriel Washington, Trevelius Leach, Demarcus Chris, some of its other playmakers. That'll be key as well. And making sure that they have the time to make those plays uh, as the offensive line blocks for them. Uh, Red Springs has won three of the last four in the series, including a 34-30 to win in the season last year. Fairmont, though, won 10 of the 13 before that uh, stretch, so um, kind of swung back and forth in this series. Fairmont is 12-10 and 10, uh, leading the series since they became conference opponents back in 2001. Douglas Bird is at Lumberton in a matchup of winless teams, and, um, you know, it's kind of cliche that, hey, somebody's got to win, uh, but um, the Lumberton team even has kind of been joking a little bit about that this week uh, when I was out at practice a couple days ago. Um, Lumberton's lost 19 straight games. Douglas Bird's lost eight in a row. Um, Lumberton's last win, though, was almost exactly two years ago against Douglas Bird, 26 to nothing back in 2021. Uh, Douglas Bird's last five wins, interestingly, have been against Robinson County Schools, dating back all the way to 2019 as their last win against someone from outside of Robinson County. Uh, some strong individuals for Douglas Bird. Quarterback uh, D- Isaiah Pope's having a decent year. Uh, Talit McCollum at wide receiver. Sincere Blunt at running back. Um, as you know, every team, no matter how well they're doing or how poorly they're doing as a team, you know, somebody uh, is going to be the statistical leaders, and, and those are some guys that are having decent seasons for the Eagles. And one of those guys for Lumberton is Nakoma Scott. And I want to pause here and mention he committed to Davidson last week, a Division One school. Um, and I actually wrote a uh, feature on him this week 
about kind of being the star player on a team that's struggled so much uh, and, and kind of the challenge that that represents um, and also how much uh, that can kind of be a lift for the program to have a player signed to a Division One school, an FCS school, uh, and show that it can be done even in the Lumberton program, uh, even as the on-field results haven't quite been there in recent years. Um, the Lumberton Douglas Bird series is 2-2 all time, and they've split the last two years as conference opponents. Douglas Bird won 14-13 last year up in Fayetteville. Here on the Robinsonian Sports Report on WAGR, I'm your host, Chris Stiles, and quickly going over uh, the upcoming week's high school football matchups. Uh, 71st is at Pernell Sweat. Uh, the Falcons come in with 27 straight regular season wins. They've won all 18 United 8 Conference games that they've played. Uh, outscoring the opposition 271 to 48 for the season, and you know scoring a lot of points, not allowing a lot of points. Uh, they're they're very dominant, uh, and a great dual threat quarterback in DeAndre Nance leads them in rushing uh, with nearly 700 yards, 12 touchdowns, uh, but also about as many yards passing the ball, 10 touchdowns, and he's thrown 85 passes this season without an interception. So very efficient. Uh, Sweat has lost three straight games since its 4-0 start. And the Falcons, 71st, has won all seven meetings historically in this series. So it'll be a tough one for Pernell Sweat on Friday night. And lastly, St. Paul's is at West Bladen. Uh, the Bulldogs coming off uh, consecutive in-county opponents. Now make the uh, out-of-county trip, but it's a short one, over to West Bladen. Uh, the Knights have had consecutive blowout losses to start conference play with Clinton and Midway, uh, who are two of the three teams uh, that are undefeated in the league, along with St. Paul's. Um, 73 percent of West Bladen's offensive production has come through the air. I don't see a lot of pass-heavy teams in high school, especially at the 2A level, but this is one. Hunter Hester's their quarterback. He's thrown for over 600 yards and seven touchdowns this season. Uh, Bulldogs coming in with some momentum, winning four straight after an 0-3 start, and they've won seven straight games in this series. Uh, and then UNCP hosts Fairmont State at noon on Saturday. Uh, Fairmont State has uh, won three straight, including a couple of blowouts in a row, 42-9 to over Concord last week. Uh, their only loss is to Wheeling, who UNCP beat by three touchdowns. So that perhaps might bode well for UNCP, but um, a lot of um, um, back-and-forthness, if you will, in the MEC this year, the Mountain East Conference. Uh, the top six, seven teams could all beat each other on a given week. Uh, Fairmont State with a very good offense, 38 points per game. Uh, and they're balanced, but they have an especially good run game uh, with 212 yards per game on the ground. Uh, they're holding opponents to 81 yards a game, but opponents have been throwing for nearly 300 against them. So I mentioned earlier uh, Colin Johnson kind of having a rough day on Saturday for UNCP passing the ball. Um, perhaps a good environment for him to rebound this week uh, as the Braves host Fairmont State at home. And you can read about all that at robisonian.com and in the print edition of the Robisonian. Uh, previews for uh, this week's games, a uh, picks column, uh, last week's game stories. I mentioned Chris Bryant, uh, East-West game selection. There's a story on that. And a feature on Nakoma Scott I mentioned, and then all the other fall sports as well. Tennis conference tournaments going on this week. Um, some cross country uh, from Wednesday afternoon. So um, plenty, of course, of local content at robisonian.com. For Paul Matthews behind the scenes here at the station, uh, thanks to Glenn Patterson for joining us as well for our interview segment. I'm Chris Stiles here for the Robsonian Sports Report. Thanks for listening to WAGR.